thank you again to our three next generation designers who are incredibly, as you all agree, rather annoyingly talented. Doesn't it drive you crazy? Um, Good. But lovely to have you here in Singapore. I'm going to start with a slightly difficult question, put you on the spot, then it'll get easier. As we are here in Singapore at a design conference, and design is the subject matter, design and business, as we heard this morning from Dr. Bay and from Agnes, Singapore's great economic success has been built on strict planning, strategic thinking, rigorous target-driven driven programs, all very left brain, not very right brain. Now, we want to, they want to embrace design creativity. They have been for a number of years, but that is the goal. The old dictum, if it ain't break, broke, don't fix it. A, should they? Do they need to? Do Singapore need to embrace design and creativity? B, can they? Don. Well, what the interesting in that way, um, Singapore is the same as the Netherlands. It's, it's artificial made. Eh? So I, I, I don't completely agree with that they are starting a new adventure in creativity because to be who you are right now, you have to have a creative mind. Without it, you would never realize. But I th I'm really interested in um, sort of radical statements. I would love to hear from Singapore in the coming 10, 15 years to experience as a city, as an island, where I can experience the future of mobility or the future of energy, or the future of waste, or the future of water, or the future of beauty, mm. or the future of luxury. And, and because you have such a small community, um, and this hard capital, and the soft capital world, uh, which we were talking about, uh, I, th I think uh, it will realize that it has to invest in new ideas to survive, according to Hong Kong and Shanghai, etc., etc. Um, but this is the moment to start doing it, and the Singapore Design Week should be the platform to experiment with that. But they will have to learn how to let go of control. And you, when you start something new, you are always an amateur. <laughs> because you don't know, but still you do. In the end, you become expert. But I didn't know anything about uh, pollution three years ago. Now I can say I'm an expert. Mm. So to learn, to experiment, to try, to show, to update, that mentality uh, will have to be embraced. And, and, yes. and, and yeah, I, I, I think there's no question about it that this will happen, yeah. in my opinion. And Andre, can, can uh, Singapore become... Yeah, you with a business plan? You're, you're building here. Uh, you, I mean, yeah. definitely. I mean, when I first, my first project in Singapore is in Sentosa. It's a resort called Capella. It's a Chinese restaurant for that. And I remembered when I was walking in Singapore in, on Orchard Road at the time, they were playing like really old Cantonese music. Okay. And I was kind of like, wow, this is Singapore. I was a little bit shocked. And if you go to Orchard Road now, it's all built up. It's very, you know, very different kind of imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the mindset definitely, it, it will take time to evolve. But what I think Singaporean might not realize is even though you could say that Singapore was, uh, is, is not a, a, a city with a long history mm -hmm. in a way, but there are many things to be celebrated. I mean, when we did Clifford Pier, for example, there was that whole heritage about you know, how the migrants migrate and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. When we're doing Andas now, I mean, I know nothing about Kapong Glam or Bugis or Shop House history, all that, and all the colors and textures that, that, that it embraces. Mm. And now we're kind of trying to find means to celebrate and embrace it. So yeah. what is interesting is you need a mindset, but you have, a lot of things here that will inspire, I think, you know, yeah. the future generations of designers in Singapore. Yeah. And finally, Beatrix, this idea of poetry and pragmatism coming together. I totally together. agree with Dan and Andre. I mean, I think when you ever you start something, there's always a feeling of needing to control something, but eventually you relinquish. But I think what's important in this case and what's going to be really exciting for Singapore is the intention. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there is hope, Dr. Bay. There's always <laughs> hope. There's we all believe. Yeah. We do believe. To remind you, questions through the app, if you can master the app. If you are having trouble with the app, please raise your hand, because we have a microphone 
And yeah. sometimes it is good to get the Don was saying earlier, it's good to see the face behind yeah, we, the question. We, 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 and there's a face behind yeah, we the like, question. We like live up. questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Butter. Okay, hi. My name is Linda. And uh, I totally agree with the earlier comment that they are annoyingly uh, creative. <laughs> and I just want to wow. tap into that a little bit. Um, the, one of the questions I had in my mind is, at age 18, what is a factor that differentiated your thinking and experience such that you are where you are here today? So at age 18, what is something that perhaps potentially influenced the way you think such that you are on a different path from most other people? Interesting. Yeah. Beatrix, when you reach 18, yeah. when do you think you will? <laughs> 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 what a charmer. You, you cannot say that. <laughs> um, Last year. I'm just trying to think. <laughs> Way back to when I was 18. Um, Wasn't that long ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. How um, old are you? <laughs> I'm 37. Oh, I'm 37. Gosh, so rude. So charmless. <laughs> um, when I was 18, I was just leaving school, and I think for me, like, I have a very traditional Asian family. You know, they wanted me to be doctors. And when I was 18, I was kind of at that cusp of of what am I going to do after school? Am I going to do sciences or am I going to do art? Um, and in some ways, that was decided for me because I wasn't so good at chemistry. Um, and also, I think at that age, I already had this feeling of, I really enjoy this. Like, I didn't necessarily think it would be a career for me, but I just, I just had so much joy from painting and sculpting, so. Yeah. Don? Cast your mind. Oh, man, I, I just had a lot of people telling me that what I want could never be done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one morning I woke up and I said, no, you're wrong. I'm a maker. I'm not just a consumer. I'm a maker. I can make decisions. I can make new dreams. I can make new designs with the sort of naive ambition that what I do or that what we do adds a purpose. I mean, it's a very naive notion, I have to admit. But, um, and then you start. But again, you don't know, but you, you start doing. And... It's a weird process, because if you would have told me when I was 18, like you have this studio and this team of smart people around you and you're making stuff, I would have called you crazy. But you make things, but the making also makes you. So it's sort of a ping pong. And, and I think uh, what, what you are also, you're driven by curiosity. And then you're being fed by knowledge and expertise. Um, and the money and the clients, etc., they, they, they follow from that. And, and don't worry about that as much as... as some people are now, yeah. Um, for me, um, I remembered when I was about eight, uh, my mother and I was in a hotel coffee shop. And my mother said, she was holding this hand towel and she said, imagine if you're a designer, you, you, know, you, you might not only be designing the hotel, you could be designing the towel. Oh, wow. So, so, ba so that changed my life. Basically, you grew up in hotels. I grew <laughs> up in hotels. <laughs> wow, yeah. wow. That is great. Um, <laughs> but, um, that explains everything. That yeah. explains yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but sorry, what, what yeah. I think it's important, especially for, I'd say, even though I considered myself the next generation, but I'm, maybe there is the next, next generation to come, <laughs> um, is that we're living in quite a dangerous time for designers mm -hmm. because of social media. I think all the youngsters, like when you're in your twenty, you know, early, late, you know, when any, when you're a teenager, you used to decide whether you like or dislike something on a click of a button. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that a lot of things that we were showing just now. I mean, especially, I mean, the hotels that I work on, for example, the Duo project. We've been killing ourselves for four years, and it's mm -hmm. still not built yet. It's still well. Yeah. It will be out in a few months. But it takes four years, and I always analyze it with the number of, peop number of people that you know, the teenagers would have dated by the time a project that takes four years would have you know, taken. And I think that that persistence and that belief and that it's not, you know, to be creative, it's not about, hey, I'm creative and I have this wonderful idea. 
there is a lot about the persistence and the passion that you have to pour into it to, to you know to to bring your shoes to show it to all yeah. these showrooms and to brave it in a way because they will look you down initially and how you kind of keep coming up with new things and reinvent and talk and all that yeah. and i think that's the key part of creativity not just the creativity yeah. itself yeah no, i agree good. i think i think you know the, the, the idea is the taste in your mouth yeah and then you need to start cooking, buying yes. ingredients, yes. uh, etc. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. the number of people that yeah. you have to convince. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And for me, like the it's Duo crazy. project, it's an M&S uh, collaboration, i.e. the Singapore and Malaysian government. Okay. So. But you still look happy. I yeah. still look <laughs> <am> very happy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very happy. Yeah. Some great questions coming through yeah. the robot at the moment. Um, has a slightly controversial one, from somebody named Where Are The Women? <laughs> Where On The Women says, as designers, could you talk about the importance of diversity in design? We are at the end of the day, and Beatrix is the first woman yeah. speaker, designer, presenter. Kudos to her, by the way. Thank yeah. you. Ooh. Very good. And, and who asked the question? Come on. Ah, yeah, good. Thank you. Thank well, you. Great much. question. Yeah. Well, Man in the middle. No, I mean, we, 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 we made the same conclusion, to be honest, uh, one hour ago. But fortunately, there are 10 more years of Singapore Design Week, so I'm sure we can sort of. But, but, but you're right. Tomorrow uh, is Women's Day, I believe. I, okay, okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, we'll, we'll be there. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think it's about triggering diversity. Uh, that's not just male or female, yeah. because that's an easy one. And it, it's important, but it's an easy one. Mm. It's about, I want to be surrounded by people who know things better than, than I can. Huh? Mm. And it triggers me, and it drives me crazy, but it pushes me. Uh, so for me, it's more about uh, div triggering diversity than, than sort of making a sum of, of, of women and men. Yeah. I personally think it's a, it's a tough one, and it's no reflection on the conference. It's just that mm -hmm. the design world, architecture particularly, it's a, it's, a, it's a boys, it has been quite a boys club. It's a, yeah. it's a, it has been quite a masculine, when you just look historically through yeah. great designers in the past. Women but art been. hasn't. Art, the curator's world, the, yes. the musea, yeah. most of them are female. So For some uh, reason, design has had this more masculine mm -hmm. front, but it is changing. Actually, it has changed, it is changing. Beatrix, would you like to comment? You're a success. I'm, um, yeah. You're 18 <laughs> years old. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you don't feel a female designer. You're just no. a designer. I don't. I don't. No, or, or no. And I feel there's a lot more maybe diversity problems to be addressed. Like, uh, I mean, currently in London, and, and I don't know about here, but in London, ever since um, you've had to pay for your own university fees, the creative industries have been really suffering in terms of those who are able to afford to go to art college. And that sort of perception that art and something creative is a luxury, mm. Mm. Um, I think still needs to be changed a little bit. Yeah, yeah clear. Andre, shall we move no, to the next one? Add. Yeah, <laughs> give that one a wide berth. Um, <laughs> another good question here from Linia. Dan, you work a lot with the public space. Yeah. Do you get inspired by Singapore's way of using Ooh. the street? Okay. Yeah, this is a good. Yeah, I mean, there's you feel it. You feel a, you, 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 you feel something buzzing. You feel it bubbling. Um, it's fascinating huh? because I think because it has this sort of scale and and sort of um, design and, and business driven. You can make radical statements. So let, let's be the landscape where we are 2030 energy neutral, energy generating. And maybe the bicycle paths I showed you are sort of an example of that. And, and I, would, I would present it as a challenge to the business world, to the entrepreneur, to the politics, to the designers. Um, so I think yeah, around Marina Bay and, and the way you, in, you integrate nature and the, and the flowers and all these things. But there is still a lot more to be discovered. And it should move beyond decoration or just being nice, like what you said, mm. but it should perform, it should yeah. add a value. But I'm sure uh, you can create places here that people see it online and say, okay, we want to go there. We want to be a part of that. We mm. want to experience that. 
And what a better place to start than, than here in that way, mm -hmm. in Asia and in Singapore. Yeah. And Andre, you've worked here. In fact, you've all worked here and, mm. and lived here. Mm. Do you find inspiration from the Singaporean streets? Oh, definitely. I mean, that's why I was just mentioning that with the Andas yeah. project, we are hoping, because of the location, and the project is about the neighborhood, so we're trying to bring the, the shop house experience into the hotel. Yes. Event, I mean, the whole idea is that. So. Here's a lovely question. Might be the last one, actually. I've just realized we're on Time's Up. It's shouting at me, but one from a design student, so it's, it's important. Um, do you have any advice? Do you have advice for a young designer? A young designer? A young designer who wants to use design to impact the world and make it a better place? I think that's a, a wonderful yeah, question. Please. Design a better place. Um, I mean, perhaps it goes back to the thing that I was talking about earlier, is that kind of persistency. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that's nothing more, more challenging uh, for my team, actually, um, or designers that I've talked to in the past 10 years, is, 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 is what it really takes to create design, um, to realize projects. It's not just a rendering. It's not just an image. Um, that's one thing. I yeah. mean, the other part probably comes to the emotions thing that we were yes. the, the kind of core to today's topic. Um, again, to create Im spaces that communicates or experiences or products that resonates with people, um, you, you need to have that passion and you have to think of the, the interaction with the end user in mind. I think that's key. Yeah. It's not just about the social media quality of design mm -hmm. or communicating it purely through images. Um, and especially for the next generation of design, I think that's even more important, that they go and see the world, um, smell it, touch it, feel it, and, and, and make it. And make it. Yeah. 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 Cool. Dan or Beatrice, anything to sum up from that last question? Changing the world? Well, advice to a young you know, designer? Like, like I, I think there's not a lack of money in this world. There's a lack of imagination. And, and, and in a way, everything already exists. Eh? The technology is there, the ideas are there. But if you start to find new connections, things pop up. Yes. And so my advice, if I would be your age and eh, I would want to have an advice, it's like you, you have to find your obsession or your frustration or your inspiration, whatever you want to call it, and you hang on to it. Yes. And you start, you start, inf you start feeding it, um, um, and believe in it. And again, there will always people, will be some people telling you, not you. Eh? I mean, you're, you're you're good, but there will be some other people telling what you want cannot be possible. And it's your job to prove them wrong. And 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 you're going to enjoy that. And and the satisfaction of making something eh? mm. that you have an idea, and then w in one, two, or three, it's there. Yes. You can look at it, you can touch it, you know, you can learn from it. That is just incredibly fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Can we just have one last question because there's a there's a hand raised yeah, there and she's been very persistent. So we'll squeeze this ah, one good. in. Yeah. Good. So thank you so much for the fantastic day. Uh, my question is super easy. So what are you learning now this year? Like the things you want to get better off in 2017 as a designer or oh, okay. creator? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beatrix? What do I want to achieve in 2017? <laughs> <laughs> World peace. No, aside from <laughs> things like that. Um, Let's start here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is for me, it's all about, you know, even though I've been working my own brands like 15 years old, is, uh, and this is probably sort of an answer to that student too, is I'm still learning and still trying to get better at being fearless. And I think that's really important um, when you're creating something. And so for me, 2017, I don't really believe in resolutions or anything like that, but, but I'd like to get better at that and, and for my work to then sort of evolve, really, mm -hmm. with that, with fearlessness underlining it. Yeah. Andre? Um, well, I guess that the more you know, the less you know, kind of. Um, Especially when, when, when your world gets bigger and you are, you could be sitting, you know, you could be working with someone that you admired as a, as a student and he could be 
your lighting consultant. He could be the artist that's creating an artwork in your restaurant. So to, to have that open mind and to, to, to really kind of live the moment in a way, I think that's important. Mm. Um, yeah, I want to do something with space waste. <laughs> there are over one, you don't know this most likely, but there are over 1.2 million objects in outer space, space debris, they have damaged satellites, and if, if larger than two centimeters, and if they hit a satellite, satellite goes down, no banking, no Facebook, wow. you know, like basta, <laughs> and it will continue to multiply in such a way that it will multiply so much that the missiles cannot be launched anymore because they get damaged. So if we continue like this, Basically, the universe is endless, eh? Mm. And we, we created a trap for planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. So what is what the smoke-free ring is waste. for Beijing? What could be... I don't know yet. Uh, 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 so you put some smart people in a room with a pizza hotline, and you say, nobody leaves the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you put some wallpaper, fortune, time magazines there, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> nobody leaves the room until we, we are finished. Yeah, okay. Something well, thank like you that. very much. Yeah. We've gone a little bit over time, but I think it was worth it. Yeah, a round you. of applause for three thank you. annoyingly talented designers. Yeah. <laughs>